I got through it. And when you look at the finished product, I, I can look at that. And I'm glad you mentioned it because a lot of people don't. A lot of people won't say, oh, well, I got the from Jeff, Jeff and Garza. <laughs> you know, or they'll know something else. Yeah. Like, Jeff and Garza didn't get a lot of, doesn't get a lot of, yeah. recognition. but it was one of the better pieces that I've ever done in my career, so. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Not, like you said, not a lot of information on Tales from the Yes, and, yes. And I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody, anybody else have any questions? There you go. How did you first get into acting? Uh, first get into acting. It was um, a film called Under the Rainbow. And it was about the making of The Wizard of Oz in 1938. And they needed a hundred little people to fill a hotel. So I was one of those hotel guests. I think that's how I'm credited as hotel guests. <laughs> um, I was in school, art school. I went to California Institute of the Arts, and I was studying to get my Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in graphic design. So. I loved to draw, and that was my main thing. But going to Cal Arts, there's three, four other schools, and there's a school of art and design, there's a school of dance, a school of music, school of film, school, and I dabbled in all of them. And that's when I discovered, once I got to the film and theater school to go and take classes there, that I wanted to be in front of the camera, and I wanted to go into film. Not to abandon my degree, because I didn't end up getting my degree, but my last year there, I got this offer to be one of 100 little people there. And it was only for a very, very short time. I was only hired for like, I think it was a couple of weeks, you know, just for the hotel scenes. Well, I ended up talking the director into, I actually played a, a, a drunk, little person, guest, hotel guest, and I said to the director, could I roll down these stairs? And it was a huge stair thing. I had to be, oh, well, actually, it was 35 steps. And it comes like a, it's like from a gone with the wind, not straight down, it had to go like a curve. And they said, oh, Okay, go, we'll shoot it, we'll set up two cameras if you think you could do that. Well, I did it, and I always claimed to, that was when I fell into the Hollywood acting thing, because right after that, after I did that stair fall, worked on the, I got my SAG card, I got my, I got my stunt card, I got, my, I got all the cards you're supposed to get, but no work, not there were people knocking at my door, saying, okay, now we want you to come back to fall. It was George Lucas and Steven Spielberg coming on the set, coming on the set and seeing all this little people thing and what they were really looking for, what Steven was looking for was the smallest of all the little people. And at that time, it was a man by the name of Pat Bylon. And he stood about two feet, 10 inches tall. He ended up working with the reason they wanted him because they wanted him to be in the BT. That's what Spielberg was doing in TV. And I'll just a little add note to that. I was the next smallest little person there. And they had Will Chamberlain and Chevy Chase taking pictures with, they wanted to take pictures with Pat because he was the smallest guy. Well, Pat went there. So they said, Phil, come on over here. I mean, you seem to be about that. So we just want to just see, see the height differentiation. Well, then it was like, now I'm going to go and I'm going to go in with Pat and I'm going to audition for the ET thing too. And it was the first time in my whole entire career that a casting agent and Steven and all the people there saying, you're just a little bit, you're a little bit too tall. <laughs> you're, a little bit, you're a little bit too tall. We need the, the smallest is small. So, the rest is history. 
you know. Then after that, we got cast in it as Ewoks in Return of the Jedi. So it went from under the rainbow, falling down the stairs, then then the E.T. thing, then the George Lucas and Jedi. So that's how it all, like, the rest is. There's actually a funny Yes. Oh, There's actually a funny picture going around. It's a girlfriend talking to her boyfriend says, you didn't cry during Titanic? How could you not cry during Titanic? It says, when I cried, and it shows your Ewok passing yeah. away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, and, and that's a, it, it really is kind of funny that, that they had Ewoks, a wicked, you know, in, when we uh, did Jedi, and, and another correlation too, under the rainbow, remember Carrie Fisher starred in that, and that's when I got to know her the best, and I, and it wasn't like, oh, it's Princess Leia, it, it was Carrie Fisher having to do this film, and we were, so when we did Jedi, we saw her on Jedi, she's saying, oh, these are all the little people from under the rainbow, <laughs> and so, when we started doing all the shooting, Lee, in that scene where he's the only Ewok that died, that's how I was recognized. That's how I could tell people, well, which Ewok were you? I wasn't wicked, because wicked went through all, followed them all around. I was that guy. There I am. There I am. Well, that scene became a vital scene in the movie where you see the one get shot and then falls over. All I had to do was to lay there. <laughs> you know, and it was Debbie that, Debbie Carrington, who was the other Ewok, had to shake me. And it was like just those five seconds. I think it was all the five, six seconds. Took the whole movie, like, by it. And I think they just decided we got it. Because you don't see Ewoks, you didn't see any Ewoks die. You see them all, they were doing being tossed around, but you don't see one die. You can't kill an Ewok. You can't have that. <laughs> so I was just lucky for them to say, hey, we're gonna put it in this way, put it in this, because it was one of the most dramatic parts of the, the whole, I mean, the part where you go, you're gonna cry. So that was my, another, you know, scene that happens to me and it becomes a, a, a really big thing, and it does, it is, and will always be, you know, that scene in Jedi. Amazing, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Come on. I, I got one. Yeah. What was your favorite role you played out of all of them? Who's oh. <laughs> <laughs> your favorite kid? I do yeah. that every day. Every day. Um, I, it's, you know, it's really, really hard to answer that. If I, you know, when I first started out, I knew it's, it's Willow, Jedi, you know, but then you do these little, like, gathering, and, you know, just obscure little pieces of, of Sabrina the Teenage Witch, or, you know, just all different types of, of genre, and you say, okay, now pick your favorite. I almost feel like I have to say, you know, Jedi will, because it's the most popular, but it's not really the case. There's a lot of other things I've done that were more than, what? Yeah, it's me. Oh, sorry. This is my wife, Elena. Um, what about Penny Oh uh, Yeah, okay. That was, that, that had, okay. Sorry, no. that was really I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm in trouble. Okay, because I missed that. I, I left that out. Remember, I told you about the stair fall. Okay, well, after the stair fall, and I got a claim for that, there was a gentleman by the name of Mark Jean who came on the set. On the set. And Mark Jean was doing, graduating from the American Film Institute and said, I need little people, just like George went there, just like Stephen went there to look for their people. We want to do this American film, this cute film called The Penny Elf. And they took all the leads, all the leads in, in the, uh, the movie Under the Rainbow. Remember, I'm just the extra. I'm, I was just the guy, the, one of the 100s. There were 
like five or six court covered. Uh, I mentioned these names because I mean, they're no longer here anymore, but these were the guys that were the actors of the little people at that time. So they call you the top maybe 10. Well, I happen to be one of the ones to go in. Not because of size, just we need an actor. He's gonna be the lead in this film. And you're gonna be you're gonna be working with Christopher Lloyd and Andrea Marcovici. If you don't know those names, they're very well established actors and actresses. So here I am, going back to that question before where I'm that's where the theme started, is I have to play the lead in a film with Christopher Lloyd and Andrea Marcovici. And I, I was like, oh. First of all, I got audition, so you audition, and it's like, oh, but yeah, maybe they're gonna go with Cork, and they're gonna go with somebody else. No, Phil, we'd like you to, we'd like you to do this. And uh, actually, he said, but Phil, I haven't sold the, the story yet, so I have to do it with no name at college. Kids, because he was American Film Institute, so he could get his master's degree for this finished product, so he did it. I played in it. I was the lead, but the act. Christopher's not there. None of these people. I I can't even remember who, who they were. But we did it on video and shot the film. It was a short film, and then he graduated and called me back that next six months later. Said, "Now I have money, and now I have people that are gonna work with me, and I want you to be in my penny up. You gotta be the penny." And I said, well, who would you? Oh, yeah, Christopher Lloyd, Andre Markovich, and I was thinking to myself, I saw the finished product of the first one. I'm thinking, God, you think I could do that with real actors, with real professional, well known actors? So that's what the thing started. I said, I, gotta, I guess I got to try. So I did. And it turned out magnificent. And the only bad part about it was it didn't go, it didn't pass that, it was a short film, so it didn't go like on CD or go on. It was just American Film Institute film that you could only see at Sundance, or you could only see it that, and they just showed it. And it wasn't long, it wasn't like, uh, it was only like 40 something minutes, and he could have made it longer, so it would fit to go for Oscar contention, you know, uh, short films for um, uh, independent film. So that's what I was banking on. I was banking on, oh yeah, I'm gonna go down. It's gonna be an Oscar winning, you know, kind of thing. Well, it, it, it didn't cut it that way. And so it just went to American Film Institute. But it, it's a piece that I have. To, that's why my wife is uh, bringing it up, is because it's, it's probably one of my best pieces that, that I've done as far as just straight acting, just straight out acting. So uh, I look at it now and I get a little, I get a little for clap because it, it, I was, first of all, I was only 21 years old, 22 years old, and just stopped never doing anything in film at all, and then I do this big production with great, and they were the most, most tremendous, people to work with it, like Thread and like all those people you mentioned. It, it's, it, it's really the people you're working with that really makes you wherever your elevation is gonna be, you know, and not popular. Not, I don't mean the popular part of that thing, like, oh, I can say I'm, I say we're trying to get out, I say you are, no. I, I, I don't consider that acting. I, it's where you take everything off of me, it's just me, and me act just like anybody else. Now, those are the ones that, that, that stay with me, keep me going, and keep me going. So, the Benny Elf, yes, was, was my, my first. I was gonna ask you, you've done stuff in costume, and stuff yes. like stuff, and then I just recently seen some drama stuff like, Touched by an angel. Yes. An episode of uh, yes. Mom's Prayer, which yes. if you guys can find it on YouTube, it's a just a beautiful episode. Even if you're not into the show, 
Uh, Phil is fantastic, and it, it's just a great episode. Thank you. Did, Thank you very much. But that's, this is an example of, I didn't want, you know, really, I, 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 if, if you were to line all those pieces I'd done, like the Penny Elf and, and, and uh, the Cloud Prayer, Double Double Toilet Trouble, just just things that are, are called, uh, uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, that's not my acting style. So when you see me in something that's like that, I'm really, really acting, because like I said before, I like the dark, crazy, you know, uh, blood dolls type of crazy one I <laughs> dressed in black, acting crazy type of guy. So, to do those other parts, like Tuck Fried Angel, Tuck Fried Angel was like, so, I mean, PG, so G. It, 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 it was very, I was really, really active in that. So when he says something like, it was a really, really fine piece, that I did my job, I, I, I did my job. And it won't be at the top of my list, I said, hey, bro, you know, what kind of work? No, it's, it's the blood dolls and, and even Von Carr, even Von Carr and Willow, it's like, it, that was, I didn't want to be the throne. I wanted to be the best warrior in the village. I want to kill something. I want to show <laughs> that, 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 that type of thing. So when you do, and if you do, go and see me and, you know, like Sabrina or Touched by an Angel. That's really some of my better work as far as acting goes. I also, I also did a little stint, I don't know what the age is here, I did a, uh, a couple of uh, episodes of Northern Exposure. Have you ever, has anybody? That's what he was saying, right? Yeah, yeah. Northern Exposure, okay. It was almost like the Addery. It's almost like the Addery and Jack, except the difference being, instead of them painting me red, they painted me green. I played the green one. I had to play uh, this, uh, this figment out of his imagination and come and haunt him. And every day, green hair, green hair, you know, that, that whole thing. And you have to go through that. You don't want that to be that you want the actor. So th those episodes, those two episodes were really, really amazing for me. And I get to, I, I still got to be mean because he really was a mean little green man. He really was haunting and so he was like right up my alley. So you give up, you give up the wearing the makeup and everything. Say, it's one of those yattering jack pieces. I like it so much. It's dark enough for me. Let's go. And then also with, with Disney Plus coming out now, Buzz, Buzz oh. Talk has been uh, oh, Buzz Bucket. Yeah, Fuzz Bat, Yeah, Bat's back there. He's a huge Fuzz Bucket. Fuzz fan. Bucket. Now, if you ask anybody about Fuzz Bucket now, nothing compared to the Ewoks. It's like, Ewoks are cute. What the hell was Fuzz Bucket? <laughs> <laughs> Even now, if you go anywhere and look it up anywhere, they say, what, what was that? What was it? And not only that, it was, the costume was horrendous. Even worse than the, worse than the Ewoks. But they had to stick these eyes. They're called scleral lenses. And it covers all the white of the eye. And you had to put them in every day. But you could only wear them a certain amount of time. And only just to give it that the blue eyed little creature. But the, the, the whole creature itself was, it was just ugly. It really wasn't real lovable. I tried, I tried so hard. Matter of fact, they even, uh, after we shot it all, and I had to do all the dialogue, because Fudge Buck had dialogue, believe it or not. And I did all that dialogue. Well, Disney, when they got a hold of it, and they were doing it around the time of uh, when Disney was uh, uh, doing movies like um, uh, Twilight Zone. Okay, uh, that's, um, uh, so they were getting a little on the darker side. So when Fuzz Bucket came out, and me having to wear the 
this all go, go through all this stuff and it didn't do very well. In fact, they wanted to make a they wanted to make a a, a sitcom out of that. And these are the old Disney. This is not Disney now. It's old Disney. Um, so it didn't get picked up because of how Kevin Yeager did the, the makeup. Fantastic makeup, but it was very very cumbersome. Very, very cool. I, I, did, I, I did not work on one part of it. And this is telling your director, I can't come in because my eyes are so swollen shut from those lenses because I kept them in too long and you're supposed to put this in your eyes and we didn't. And, and so it would like, if anything goes wrong with Fun Bucket, then we have to shut everything down. So I had to shut the, you have to, you, you have a choice. You can go, well, I'm just going to go through it. Oh, no, because you got doctors telling you, you're going to tear your eyes up. So that I felt bad about. And then your finished product, they say, oh, well, all your dialogue, you said, your voice flow is it's a little rough. It's a little, it's a little dark. I love my voice. I've known it for my voice. They put in the man who did the voice for Winnie the Pooh <laughs> to do all the dialogue again. So what you hear in Fuzz Bucket is not my voice. And a lot of people don't know that. But then after I did that, they casted me in the Black Cauldron. And I don't know if you are aware of that film, which was a Disney film. When Disney was trying to go darker, mm -hmm. but they went, I, evidently they went a little bit too dark. <laughs> but they, you, they, they loved my voice. They wanted me for my voice as creep. And it was so successful. I just thought, hell, that's just pass it right over. Well, maybe that was, maybe that was a reason why they didn't want me to be, do the voice for Fuzz Bucket. Because, because they're gonna know the voices creep. That's what that's why I would tell myself. That's why. That's why. No, no, no. They just didn't want your voice to be in that creature and we had to get someone that's with the powers of being say, we need Winnie the Pooh's voice. We need a type of voice. So but they did use me correctly with the creep because that was for me just my voice. And all I had to do was just read the lines off the thing. And, and, and I was working with amazing people like John Hurt. He was the Lord King. It was like it, that same type of thing for elevating me. It was my first time ever doing voiceover work. And I'm doing it in, a, in the Walt Disney's 25th animated feature film. And you're working with John Hurt. And he, the, the fear comes in again, and they have to go through all that again. And, but it was him that helped me do his voice, my voice together. My God, it's a, it was a godsend. And I'm pushing for that stuff because you don't hear so much. You didn't hear very much about Fun Bucky. You didn't hear very much about the Black Cauldron. And it always seems well, Phil, why are you didn't hear it? Because it's Disney. And Disney's Mickey Mouse and Snow White and Seven Dwarfs. It's not, not Creeper and Fuzz Bucket and, you know, so I can understand. Matter of fact, I think if they re-released the Black Cauldron now, it would probably do better now than it would when they did it, which was back in the 80s, so, because it was so dark. Flesh falling off of people, dead, that whole thing. So. I think the original question was fuzz bucket, right? Yay, fuzz bucket, bring it back. <laughs> yes, release it on Blu-ray. Disney. Yes. Can you talk about troll and oh, I can talk about troll all day. <laughs> Even when I don't want to. Um, I can talk about it. Uh, you want to know about uh, okay I, I, double duty and yes there you go i did one of these trolls. john Miegler, uh came to me 
and said, Phil, I got this movie control and I want you to play the part of Malcolm Mallory, which was the, the, the poor little guy, professor, who was dying of a terminal disease. And so you had to be that. Plus, just the way I looked, it was like giving me my first time. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not under no latex. I'm not under anything. I'm, I'm going to be Malcolm Mallory's professor and working with all these great actors again, Michael Moriarty, Shelley Hack, Jenny Beck, you know, Hathaway, all legit guys. Julie Louise Dreyfus is like, how can I go wrong? Oh, well, we want you to, John, who made the troll, said, I want you to be the troll, really. He said, well, I, I don't, I, can we get the little person to, to do that? We get somebody else to do that. Uh, but I want Malcolm. He said, Phil, this is how it's going to be. You don't have a lot of money. Blah, blah, blah. This is the only way we're going to be able to swing this. If you don't do troll, if you can't do troll, then you can't have Malcolm. So I said, okay, for, for, for Malcolm's sake, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Then they put me in suits, full body suits, and all the wiring and all the thing. And, and, oh, and on the close up, you gotta make sure the eye thing is right. I could tell you horror stories that would make you cringe. Prosthetics aren't the same anymore. Prosthetics have gone from whatever I can spit and super glue to fine, breathable air conditioning type suits. But back then, it was absolutely terrible. I had to literally get into that outfit, go and do a scene with all the makeup and everything, and then go run to your trailer, take off all the stuff, turn it to Malcolm, take off everything, make sure there's no marks, make sure there's nothing on your face to show that, hey, that guy's the same. No. And do this, be a professor, and you want to cry again, you know, make people really feel for this, this guy, out of costume. So it was like, Okay, I was doing scenes with the troll as Malcolm, and then I'd be in the troll and have to pretend I'm playing with myself or lifting up my head. They made a full, they made a little miniature of me, me of Malcolm, and, and the scene where I pick myself up, troll picks up myself, and I'm I'm this little puppet, Malcolm, but it was so. So real to me. <laughs> and then to see the finished product, the way you're now you're seeing it from the outside. I was seeing it. I can't go pick up that puppet, pick up and me. And it's in there moving the mouth, making it there. It was surreal. It was surreal. So playing both parts kind of messed with my head. But like I said before, you get put in that situation, you have two ways you can go. You can either bomb or you can raise that level. Yeah. So I have to say, it's the talent I had around me to lift me to that, no matter if I'm in costume or not. So a lot of it goes to my, my cast people. And yeah, I got bad horror stories, but that's because I came into this, this business through makeup effects. A lot of my things started with makeup effects. So John Beaver and, and, and Kevin Yeager and people like that who are, I mean, John's not around anymore, but Kevin Yeager and John was on his way to being everything as big as the biggest ones are now. And I, I'm really, really glad that I have on celluloid me being a part of that process. Yes? Yeah, what, what's your favorite costume? I know you did Greaser, Greg, and so many costumes. Okay, well, Greaser, okay. We're, we're going to another John Beamer thing. John Beamer did 
control and he did go to the milk kids. So, so it's the same type of thing, except this time I get to bring friends. <laughs> I get to bring friends, although in Fudge Bucket, I had, there were a couple of Fudge Bucket little people too. I think I brought some friends in for that too, with those same people, and the same people that worked on Jedi, and the same people that worked on Under the Rainbow. We did the garbage film kit. So all this is, is all of these little people are all just going up the, you know, going down the pike. So, hey, we need to do garbage bell kids. Phil, you know little people, right? So help me out. I said, well, first of all, I get to pick the one I want, number one. So I got the coolest dude in the world. I got Greaser Greg. So that's why I got Greaser Greg. Then it was like, okay, now Phil, you gotta, you gotta give me people to do. Well, what do I, I have? people I've worked with before. So you say, oh, this guy's here. Uh, Debbie Carrington, I mentioned her name. She was the Ewok. I shook me in the thing. Hey, Terry, I mean, uh, Debbie, would you like to try an audition for Mallory Vomit? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would. Ooh. Kevin, Kevin Thompson. Said, uh, we worked on Get I Had, we worked on Under the Rainbow. Hey, Kevin, you want to come in and do uh, Alligator? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, all come in. After we get cast and do all the work, and then you got to put those costumes on. You know, before it was, hey, Phil, thanks a lot for recommending me, or hey, Phil, for telling me about it. That yeah, was. You put me in this. I mean, the reason I picked them was because they they've gone through it. They, they did the he walks into the so it's like I didn't recommend them you because of like your great talent or your friend. It's like you're used to this, you're probably gonna do it better than anybody else, right? Right. So that's why they got this off. So I don't feel bad. I don't feel bad if they had a bad story. I, I don't feel bad that, like if you were to ask me that question about trolls and you have bad things, yeah, I got some bad things about it, but I'm, I'm not gonna, thank you. Thank you for, thank you for putting me in all that makeup. Thank you, thank you, Dark. That's what I expect. I'm not thankful for me. Next, next. So I, I don't feel bad. I feel bad that, I feel good now, that, that now we're kind of, then we went on to do Willow, remember? And they took all the makeup off and they let us be little people as we are. And I was lucky enough to get involved with that as well. So, I don't, um, I don't, now, I'm not one of the actors now, little people actors now, that will jump into a heavy makeup role. I, I, I'll, I, will, I will move away. Matter of fact, I'm the one that will go in for parts that don't call for little people. I did that way back in the 80s. Well, I'd walk in on, I'd, I'd find out about pieces, and you walk in and you, and you can audition, and you know, they're all sitting there, you stand up there, you go up and say, wait, what are you auditioning for? Oh, I'm auditioning for the guy Mark, this crazy guy. Um, did you, look, just give me a stab, and sometimes it's worked, and sometimes I'm not casting, so, no, we said call for a little person to go. Then they're the ones that say, man, give it a shot, take a shot. Mm -hmm. And they go, oh my God, this is gonna work. This is gonna work. And do lots of parts that I haven't done have been, that I've wanted have been where, sorry, it's, you did a really good job, but it just, a little person just won't cut it. Now it's okay. Now we're getting actors and people out there like, 
my bird drawer, uh, Peter Dinklage, that stabbed himself where you're not looking at the, the weirdness, you're looking at how they're portraying it. And it, you know, I'm finding out now that it works. It, you just don't, we've come a long way from, we just don't, little people just don't play little people, they can play people. Michael Dunn. She comes again. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I grew up with people like Michael Dunn, Billy Barney, and seeing that they, I mean, Billy in one way was, he didn't mind being the little, but he always had that thing where I don't want, I don't want any. And we did Under the Rainbow. That was the first time I had to like actually work with him and to cast him as the Nazi, he was spot on. It just made me look at him because all the other things were like, hey, do I care you? You know, like, oh, little people. And he could do that and it could be funny, but he was a wonderful musician, wonderful. He was very, 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 wanted to be very, very mobile. And so as he got older, it, it, it really bothered him because he couldn't run as fast, couldn't move as fast, and do all that. So when he did Under the Rainbow, you gotta really look at that part and see that what he did. He had to run all over the place. He had to and play this Nazi. And it, he was, that's where it kind of started kind of watching uh, Michael Dunn and Wild Wild West, Ship of Fools, and putting all that together said, hey, you know, this is possible. I won't have to be, I won't have to be this creature, you know? And I did a lot of creature stuff. You look at my resume, a lot of creature stuff. And I thought that was gonna be the rest of my life. I've been blessed to be able to do those Touch by an angel. So, uh, Northern Exposure, uh, Willow, uh, and Billy Barty again. That was an experience for me to go from under the rainbow 1981 and then we, years, years, year, years later, we do uh, Willow together. As a matter of fact, when I went in, I would read for the High Aldwin who Billy Barney played, and Ron Howard and George Lucas played. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. And I was thinking, oh my God, I'm, I'm not going to get in on this. I'm not going to be one of those guys in there. You know, uh, the, the, the trio that goes, Migosh, Brittle Cut, uh, and the two warriors, they go on, I'm gonna miss it all out. It's gonna be Ward and these guys from London, these UK guys. Well, they called me and said, we want you to be Vodka, okay? We'd like you to be the warrior that kills all the death dogs. My agent calls me and says, Phil, you're going to London. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry, but I just, uh, I just committed for garbage mail kids. <laughs> oh, well, Phil, you make your decision what you want to do. And I said, oh, I contractually, I, I, I gotta finish garbage mail. I gotta be Richard sure Gray. I said, oh, oh, okay. And turn it down. George Lucas calls. He said, we have all the people. We have Warwick. We have, we have um, David Steinberg. We have uh, Virgil Cut. We have all our guys. And we have Vodkar. We have their two warriors. And he hates them. He doesn't want them. He wants you. So now, I have to figure out how I can do that and that. Now granted, remember I got all those other little people that are, have to stay and do garbage mail kids. And, oh well, I'll see you guys later, I have to go and, and, and do this other, with other little people in the UK. They all know each other, everybody knows each other. I gotta go here. And they said, well, who's gonna do Grease or Grin? Who else? My brother. My brother, who I 
connected under the rainbow with, we were cast as one of the 100. Remember? Okay. We both did the same things. The only thing that put me out is made me stand out from the crowd of 100 with the stair fall. So everything else between me and my brother are all identical. He's six years older than I am, but our stature, the way we walk, the way we talk, I, I don't know if I'm killing myself now here, but I'll just say that I was able to do both parts at the same time. I just won't say how. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so my brother is not, is not in the, the act, he's a wonderful musician. Matter of fact, he wrote the title song for Under the Rainbow, but they didn't take it. So he wanted to go into the musical part of, of Hollywood. And he, he's done a fine job, done a great job. Me, I wanted to be in front of the camera. So I like to say I did a fine job. Tell us about your experiences on Willa. Well, uh, Willow, uh, that, again, I, I have to give my extra credit to George Lucas. And you know, if he would ask me, uh, George Lucas, he's a great guy. He's kind of, as far as you see, George Lucas, people that really like him or people that really don't like him. So. I was blessed to be able to work with him. And you have to remember, George Lucas wrote Willow. And he wrote Willow during the time we were doing Return of the Jedi. They had to put 50 little people in a hotel in Brookings, California. And they were the Ewoks, so we did all the, the fighting scenes. He was able to watch that every day. You see the our, our going from the hotel to the forest and doing all the things and playing football and seeing all the camaraderie and doing all the, oh, we all had crazy stories. I, 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 I think that that's where he got his idea we're gonna do this little thing with village people and the, and all he kind of did was just take a bunch of little people and put them. This time I'm not gonna, this time, you guys, I'm gonna take you out of your costumes and I'm gonna let you just be regular little people. So that in itself was, just seeing that in Willow was amazing. And then they get to work with people that you worked with many, 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 many years ago when we first started our careers, it was even better. So Willow was a, it was a, it was a, it was a godsend to us. And we really didn't think Vodcar was gonna be that big a deal. As a matter of fact, if you read the book, it's not, not that big a part at all. It was George that came and said, hey look, we're gonna do the scene where the death dogs come into the village and we can do the death dogs and we gotta have someone kill them. We gotta, we gotta have someone show some balls in the movie somewhere. All the other ones are running, all the other ones are saying, no, let's, let's save the baby. But you've got 200 pound Rottweilers coming into your village and <laughs> killing people, looking for that baby. So we gotta have some. So when we were first shooting, the first time we get to see Von Carr, there's a photo out there, Ron Howard directing me in, in the scene. I want you to be a George walks over to Ron and walks into the forest for a little bit, for a little while, comes back. And the one day shot for Von Carr scenes turned into over a week just to shoot. How's he gonna do it? What are you gonna do? How are you gonna do that? Throw the sword to him. 
will the will the people accept that? Is that a little bit too much? Them killing? No, 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 no. We want Ron Carter to be the best warrior in the village. So Ron and Ron did care. Let's stick to the book. Well, as things started getting taped and started getting said, hey, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. So working with those dogs, working through, running through the village, doing it, it was very, very taxing. And now, and now, I'm going around in scooters, and I, when I see Willow now, I go, oh my God, that's what, that's when I was at one. <laughs> in every aspect of the word, I hear my dad get killed. I'm the best warrior in the village. So uh, I have people saying, you know, quoting it and the whole my God, but it, it is. Uh, I, I really didn't expect it. I didn't expect it because what was in the script wasn't what, what went on film. It got bigger. And if I sit here now, I say, you know, my car didn't have that big a part to begin with. It wasn't big. It wasn't long. Matter of fact, it was kind of a. Idiot for not going along with it. What does he do? He goes back with vertical cut and not sit protect Willow and the baby. When I did, yes, I did. Sitting at a lunch table, walked right up to George and said, "Hey, George, don't you think? Don't you think Art Car should not go with them? You know, he's the best boy. Yeah, but he is the best boy in the village, so he's got to protect the village. So." You gotta go back. I said, God, I'd like to, I, I, I'd like to go with him and and protect the baby and and Migosh and and Willow. No, then then everyone in the village dies. So no, <laughs> you, you, you you have to stay there. So what do you want? You want to be the best boy in the village, or nothing, or not be the best warrior in the village? I'll be the best warrior in the village, so I'll stay in the village. That's what that happened. Otherwise, I was I want to be through the whole thing. When I'm now I think here, I'm glad I did. The trekking we had to do, the they had to fly us in on helicopters, just the five of us in, in deserted islands in New Zealand and Wales and all, and drop us just to get a scene that they didn't even use. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a very, very Turned a little teeny, 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 teeny part written to a, a big part for me. Maybe not long, but it's a big part for me. Well, thank you. I, we're going to get you back to the table for the final hour of the show here. Uh, I know I, t I told you when we picked you up, but thank you for making my childhood better with your roles. We grew up on you. A lot of us grew up on you. Thank you. And it's an honor to have you here. Thank you. Thank yes. you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all.